everyone, I am back to review the next brand. And I realized as I was scrolling down the big list that you guys have for me, I missed one. So I am going back up the list just a little bit to this recommendation from Bridie. She recommended this company that is a Canadian company called Pure Potent Wow. So that is going to be the next one that I will be assessing for you. Let me just zoom right in so you guys can see it, especially if you are on your phones, it's harder to see. Um, okay, looks like their website needs an update, but that does not mean their essential oils aren't wonderful. So let's click on essential oils. This is, like I said, a Canadian company. Let's take a look at their bergamot. Yes, this is one that I love to assess. Is this all they, they, there's nothing clickable. Okay, so this is all they have here. They have the botanical name, which is great. It is peel, it is cold pressed. So this is going to be photo toxic. I'm not seeing any safety information. It's just here, like this listed, like you see here. Um, this is really expensive, by the way. $20 for a five mil is really expensive for bergamot. Um, I'm not seeing any safety information. Carrot seed essential oil is not safe for pregnancy. I'm not seeing that here. Um, cinnamon bark and cinnamon leaf. I'm glad that they make the distinction between the two. Some companies do not. It's really expensive. That is surprising to see. It shouldn't be that expensive. It's funny on another company that I was assessing yesterday, the prices are almost flipped. They had cinnamon leaf as being so much more expensive than cinnamon bark. So that's very interesting and definitely not reflective of prices, you know, that it should be. Um, 30% blended in organic jojoba oil, which is interesting. Uh, okay, then just plain clove oil. Nothing showing that it's anticoagulant. Um, eucalyptus, nothing saying ages 10 plus. I mean, there's no safety information here at all whatsoever. None. Let's take a look at their blends. Okay, so this was a Breathe Easy blend. Not surprising to see eucalyptus more than one form, peppermint, tea tree, rosemary, and Ravensera. Don't like that one. That one's pretty unsafe. Um, recommended dose and use. One to three times per day. One to 12 drops. One to three times per day. Are they suggesting ingestion? Makes me wonder. I'm not sure what else they could mean by one to 12 drops, one to, one to three times per day, but I definitely would not follow that advice. Do not use with other products containing camphor, menthol, eucalyptol, and eucalyptus essential oil. Okay. Um, direct inhalation, apply one to six drops of undiluted essential oil to a tissue and inhale occasionally. Well, that's not too bad. If it's undiluted and it's on a tissue, your tissue is not gonna break out in redness or blisters. Um, use up to three times per day, steam inhalation, add three to 12 drops of undiluted essential oil to a bowl of steaming water up to three times per day. That is a lot of drops. Now, when I recommend steam inhalation, I recommend one or two drops. Definitely keep the eyes closed and avoid using peppermint. Eucalyptus and tea tree are great or rosemary and tea tree, but you want a total of one to two drops. It's very intense. Three to 12 drops of this blend would be really intense. Your eyes will probably sting. Diffuse six to eight drops, that's reasonable. Um, diffuser full of hot water, hmm, interesting. If you have epilepsy, asthma, I'm assuming they mean persistent or chronic cough or other lung, chronic lung conditions, do not use this product. Hypersensitivity has been known to occur, in which case discontinue use, hmm. Not agreeing with their um, recommendations for sure. 
and I'm really not seeing any flags like you know that are specific like make sure you don't use under age 10 um anything interesting so calm moving on to their calming blend yes this could be effective for helping people feel calm i agree and even with the addition of bergamot that is a very nice blend for calming um again not really sure what they mean if they're suggesting that you ingest this i highly disagree with that um adding to your bath okay i do like that they are suggesting adding it with liquid soap because that will help to um dilute the essential oils and protect your skin from it being concentrated on your skin um i would definitely add more liquid soap though eight two to eight drops with the same amount of liquid soap that's not going to dilute it very much if you are using equal amounts that's still a 50 percent dilution which is rather high for the bath let's see use two drops of undiluted essential oil the first time and increase by one drop per bath to a maximum of eight drops okay interesting again the hot water diffuser i wonder why they distinguish that um, most diffusers are going to be a cool mist diffuser, which is what is recommended. Hot water, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just interesting. I've never seen that recommended before. Chill essential oil blend. Yes, this is a very cooling blend. Yes, it is. Tansy's not safe, though. A lot of the tansies aren't safe. There are different kinds. A lot of safety issues with tansy. Do not expose to the sun. Why? This would be um, a flag that I would like to see on blends that have phototoxic essential oils, but there are no phototoxic essential oils in this blend, so I'm really not sure why they're, they have this safety thing here. Of all places, that should be here. Orange, lemon, lime, and grapefruit. That should be here. I wonder if somebody made a mistake. Cold relief. I see how that could be helpful for germs. Again, not really liking this. I'm assuming that's a an internal use suggestion. I don't recommend that. Um, similar suggestion for the bath. That is a really high dilution. And the issue is like clove has a really low topical max. It's 0.5%. Cinnamon, we have cinnamon bark, cinnamon leaf with 0.6 and 0.01 topical maxes. Um, peppermint has a 5.4 topical max. So, you know, suggesting a 50% blend in the bath is rather high. I don't know why, again, this is not a photo. These, these are not phototoxic essential oils. So I'm not really sure why they have this avoid using in the sun blend. Hmm. Interesting. So their fairy blend is lavender and vanilla. I am curious to know what makes them choose lavender as medicinal and vanilla as non-medicinal. That's interesting. Hmm. Eh. I would say they have a ways to go as far as their safety recommendations. Again, like with any company, this is not to say that their essential oils are not good. They may be perfectly fine. I personally prefer to spend my money with companies that actually have an awareness of safety, but you could always, if you grabbed one of my books and looked up the essential oil safety for yourself, you don't necessarily need to rely on them for their safety recommendations. Um, and you can find both of those books at ueoslibrary.com. If you have any questions about any of the blends that I didn't assess, if you have questions about any of the information um, that I've shared with you, any of my own feedback, please let me know by leaving your comment or question below. And I will proceed on next after this uploads to YouTube to assess the next brand that you've asked me to assess. So I will see you in a few.